Okay, cool. Welcome, Shannon. Uh, this is a uh, an interview, a post program interview, and we're going to be going over what your experience was so far in the uh, ninety day vagus nerve stimulation and repair program. So, um, so welcome. I'm really excited to interview you about your experience with the um, with the program as a whole, with the vagus nerve stimulation uh, technology we used, um, and your experience and kind of why you initially signed up for the program and to help others understand what it's really like going through a vagus nerve centric uh, program where it really focuses okay. on that uh, that exclusively um, with a few other things thrown in. So, um, so yeah, initially, uh, let us know like what was um, uh, what was your initial reason for for joining the program? What was the main thing you were hoping to accomplish by joining? Okay. Um, my chiropractor is the first one that introduced me to vagus nerve and what she had been doing research about, you know, and learning about it. Um, the reason I specifically thought to try it is because two days before my period starts for 10 or 12 years, I vomit mm -hmm. all day long. You know, and the same chiropractor told me that my stomach would spasm and it would just keep spasming and I would get sick all day. So once a month, you know, if it happened on a work day, I lost a whole day of work. If it happened on a weekend, I mean, an entire day. So that's what I was really trying to fix. And I feel like over the 10 years, 12 years I was having this issue, I feel like I had tried everything I could try to kind of eliminate it. So, um, so that's why I reached out to you and joined the program to try to figure that out. Fantastic. Fantastic. So yeah. And for, yeah, from my recollection, it was really long term um, issue. And when we when we initially consulted with each other, when we d had our first initial consultation phone call, um, you had you had kind of brought me up to speed on what the problems were. Um, and the, the initial problems were that you were getting really nauseous beforehand. So about two, three, two to three days prior to your period developing you would get really extreme bouts of nausea. Is that correct? That is correct. And I would get a really severe pain right on this part of my neck. And, you know, I could try to take pain relievers and it wouldn't do it. The only thing that would even give me a little relief was to push on it and lay on it and try to get as much pressure on it as I could. But, um, but it still wouldn't, it wouldn't resolve itself until everything had worked its course. Gotcha. So, yeah. And then, and you had tried, I remember you had tried many um, different drugs to help mm -hmm. with it. Um, I believe like anti-nausea uh, medication as well was pretty common. Um, and so on that, on that first consultation, what we did is we developed a plan, a plan of action, essentially, like kind of like a 90 day plan. Um, and where, where we kind of worked together on this was that we're going to look at how to initially influence the, the vagus nerve. Because there was an, an initial suspicion that because the vagus nerve does connect to, um, to like the ovaries and the release of progesterone um, in, in a monthly cycle, that it does help regulate those glands, that in, in part by stimulating it, it may help to provide some initial change and some initial movement in the process. Um, and from your understanding, that, that seemed to kind of to resonate with you um, in terms of what might help. Is that correct? Right. When I would do my own research and it took me a long time to figure this out. You know, if you got sick the day your period started, maybe someone else could put two and two together faster than I could. But because it was two days prior, you know, am I eating too much sugar? What did I do yesterday? Was it the glass of wine? I mean, and I'm horrible about tracking. So I, it took me embarrassingly long time to figure out what, what was causing this problem. Once I figured out exactly, and also my period was changing. It was going to, you know, three weeks apart instead of four weeks apart. So I really wasn't tying it together because it wasn't, you know, exactly 28 days apart or whatever was happening. So I um, did my research and looked and, you know, two days before your period starts is when your estrogen and your progesterone spike. Mm. So then it occurred to me that was the fastest way for your body to eliminate something like that is getting sick. So two days before I was given this huge spike of hormones and then, you know, I would, my body would need to get rid of it and that's the quickest way to do it. So then it all started clicking and, you know, when we started talking about it and putting, putting it on paper. Okay, great. So the first, so, and how we did it is we, we separated our 90 days together into three different chunks. So we said there's mm -hmm. going to be three main cycles we're going to go through. So initially, you know, the first 28 days the first 30 day period, um, 
it, it's not to expect a whole bunch of change, right? We're not expecting to initially fix it or completely eradicate the, the nausea, but we are looking for some initial differences. And I remember there was an interesting difference. Do you remember what that was? In that first if period? I recall, I had my vomiting like mid cycle. Mm -hmm. um, it was completely unexpected. It was not the right time to have it. But when I told you that, you said movement is movement. It's when you're stagnant that it's the problem. So if things are changing, we're changing something and something is, you know, is, you know, mm -hmm. getting yeah. better. Yeah. Um, and then also over the course, not to jump ahead, but my period started going back to four weeks. So those are two changes that happened over the, over the cycle. Yeah. And I, I remember, so yeah, initially it's usually, so we started like there's day one and then the average time for a period is usually about 27 days. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I think I recall correctly that you have a, a, a faster than normal period, generally speaking. It was about 23 days, correct? Right. On average. That's correct. I would get sick on day 21 and then 23 my period would start. Right. So it's a relatively fast cycle. So that's a lot more nausea in that period of time um, than if it was a 27 day cycle. Um, and so right. I think about day 14, it, you actually had a, an initial spike of nausea. Mm -hmm. Um, and it lasted Correct. for one day. And so then right. that happened. So that was an indicator of something's shifting here, right? Mm -hmm. And then I believe that on the same, about the same time, about day 21, 22, 23, that you did have the, your actual period at that time. Correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yes. And how that, that one wasn't much different, right? It was still about the same, but it wasn't, wasn't as right. I think maybe I got sick. I, right. I think I got sick once or twice, but then it mm -hmm. stopped. And usually I have to take exhaustive measures to make it to stop. Right. Uh, but this time it, I only got sick once or twice and then it was over. So I remember being just as excited about that as yeah. it, you know, I didn't get sick at all because that was huge that it, you know, stopped on its own. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great. And then, so then that second cycle that we did, um, the second period. Um, do you recall what happened in that second period? I believe I moved 26 days or 27 days apart. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's, again, I think I only got sick once or twice, if at all. Yeah, I'm a horrible mm -hmm. at writing this stuff down. That's fine. I, I get great <laughs> notes on this stuff. <laughs> on good, own. good. Um, yeah, so then, yeah, that was the second cycle. You switched into a, like a 27 day cycle. So it was mm -hmm. a much longer thought. than normal, which is, is definitely more standard. I think it's probably mm -hmm. would be considered more healthy, um, relatively speaking. Um, mm -hmm. And so the, and then there was that second cycle, which is really promising. And then the third cycle, um, I did we notice an initial like a mid blip, a mid nauseous blip? Because I think this. I don't think so. Right. So I think the third happen. cycle. Right. right. And then the end, so the end of the very third cycle, what happened then? Do you remember? Perfect. I didn't even have PMS. I didn't know it was coming. Um, no headaches, no vomiting. Wow. It's amazing. Yeah. So we made, yeah. It so was we, very amazing. Yeah. Very cool. And this had been something you had literally been dealing with for many, many years. Very consistently. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. With all kinds of drugs, all kinds of anti-nausea medication. Right. Yeah. So a lot of work went into that. And then this, this specific modality of stimulating the nerve um, mm -hmm. really helped to, again, it created that movement in the system that, that allows you to kind of break free of it. Um, and I know that kind of the medication you had been taking before, it's, it's pretty hardcore stuff. It, it really blocks a lot of the, it, it does some initial blocking of nausea of, on the vagus nerve. But anytime you block something with a chemical blocker, it has like residual effects. So I've often found mm -hmm. that like you can get initial pain relief from something, but you also could make pain worse later on. So the thing that you, you, use, you well, were using and, to fix could have made it worse. And some of these along the way, um, it would so out of control. I would actually go to acute care or the emergency room. And then when you, know, when you do that, you're walking out with, you know, five different shots and you know they try to slip in a flu shot and all the things that they try to do Whoa. you know I, I i know it's awful <laughs> but you know then then you know but i feel so bad i'm like whatever you have to do to make this stop yeah so but oh i'm gosh. i mean more than once i ended up in the er for this and we de would get dehydrated and you know mm -hmm. i mean it was it wasn't just inconvenient for a day a month you know yeah it was it was miserable yeah so it was very risky 
quote, uh, r risky, um, I would, call, it's like an illness almost, or it's a bodily reaction, like a sickness that's trying to, it's like your body's trying to purge some kind of, some, you know, right. cleaning itself out essentially. And it just, right. And it started a little bit before I turned 40. So, okay. you know, is that normal? I don't know. It's definitely not optimal. No, you know, no, definitely not. And I don't think that, no, that, I mean, that's definitely not a normal thing to happen for that to be that bad. Um, and mm -hmm. what do you, what do you think, what would you want to say to people who, who think that, that there should, that they're just become so used to period pain, that, to, to the nausea, what would you say to them about this kind of thing? Like, it, is there... And that you do, you accept things as normal that, you know, are not optimal. And that's what I always try to keep in mind is, yeah, it might be your normal, but it's not optimal. Optimally, you shouldn't feel this bad before you, your period starts. And for three months now, I don't, I mean, I, if I don't look at the calendar, I don't know it's coming. Wow. You know, I mean, I used to have tender breasts. I don't have that. You know, I, I still kind of get a little irritated, but that mm -hmm. may not be me, but, uh, <laughs> You know, I just, it, it's, more out of your control. it's very yeah. nice because now I'm, I'm, you know, I'm getting closer to 50 and I have less hormonal problems that I had all along. So, I mean, yeah. it's really fantastic. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. And so what's your, what's your, in, what's your suspicion about what's happening here? Like, you know, your body best. Do you feel like it is a, that it um, is a regulation of hormones like progesterone, estrogen, do you think that there is a shift happening or is it something just mental? What do you, what do you think is going on? Um, I feel like it is hormonal. You know, if you, if you Google a chart on how your hormones work or how a woman's hormones work over a month, you know, it spikes two days before your period. Right. And that's exactly when I was getting sick. So really, it really became clear to me that it was hormonal. Mm. And uh, now that we've done this vagus nerve work for so long, you know, it seems to me that it, we're correcting the issue. It's the underlying issue. I hate treating symptoms. You know, mm -hmm. what is causing the problem? And now it looks like we're regulating that to where it's not a problem anymore. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. And so um, what was your initial reaction to seeing that there was an, an sort of an alternative method to, to potentially treating this or to, to potentially look at, at helping? What was your initial reaction? What was your thought process? to going, well, okay, I've tried so many things. They just don't seem to be working. I'm going to give this a shot. What was your thought process there? Well, the chiropractor told me that she had read some stuff about, um, like if you get an underlying infection that doesn't clear up, it can just lie dormant in your vas vagus nerve. And other things that she was doing, it was telling her I was having vagus nerve issues. Mm -hmm. um, so I moved away from her, unfortunately. So I had to start doing my research and figuring out stuff on my own. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, you know, reading the symptoms and looking at stuff like that it really made me think this was the right, the right path. And I'm also going to throw something in here. You talked about this week on your Facebook page, um, the sensory deprivation tank. Mm -hmm. If I would do that the week before my period, it would minimize my symptom. Mm -hmm. So again, um, that leads me more towards hormones because that detoxes you through your skin and that would help those hormones release. And then I also wouldn't get sick. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Yeah. There's, um, yeah, a lot of amazing benefits from like flotation uh, therapy as well. What, <laughs> what has what has this freedom from this like? Because this is nausea that can send you to the hospital, right? So that makes right. it. And and, and yep. before we started, it was every twenty one days. So that's like mm -hmm. every three weeks, you're like, I'm gonna be out on my butt, totally laid out, being sick, taking medication. So what what has that afforded you now in terms of some freedom? in terms of your other parts of your life? What, what more are you able to it, do because of that? It's amazing. I mean, I, one of the times I was sick was right before we went on a cruise. So, mm -hmm. you know, I kept thinking I would feel better and I didn't feel better. So nine o'clock the night before the cruise, my husband took me to the emergency room. They injected me with all kinds of stuff. Um, then when I finally felt better the next morning, I had to pack for a week long cruise in two hours. Um, I've missed you know, we're big SCC basketball fans. I've missed games because I, you know, I'm not going to get between, you know, 12 people that I have to climb over to get to a restroom to get sick, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's just, and now I don't have to worry about that. I know I can make my plans and I'll have to look at the calendar and work stuff out. Mm, beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Tell me a little bit more about the sleep. How's the sleep improved? For you? Okay. Very much. Um, huh. The first couple of weeks, 
Um, I was using the app. You know, the little chart tells you deep sleeps. And maybe I was getting one or two deep sleeps. Is this the Aura Ring or the Apple Watch? No, it's the Apple Watch. Apple Watch, okay. Good. Yep. So now when I look at it, um, I mean, I hit deep sleeps. It's a beautiful cycle of, mm. you know, mm. of deep sleep throughout the night. Um, but if I don't do it, you know, if I get to bed later, I don't read or, you know, for whatever reason, I skip it. Yeah. You can see it. Yeah. You can see it. Wow. That's, that's impressive. So mm -hmm. yeah, this is, this has probably had some pretty profound, um, effects outside of just your health. So have, has this impacted like your personal life allowed you to, to be less, like have less stress, perform better. What are some other external benefits from being free of this problem? I feel like I have less stress, you know, I feel calmer, um, but you know, <laughs> I don't know that to be true. I know I'm getting better sleep cause I can see it on my, you know, with my Apple watch, mm -hmm. you know, and I love that stuff. Every morning I hop up and check it cause I just think it's so interesting, you know, Oh, I had a glass of wine. Look at how it interrupted my sleep, right. you know? So yeah. I enjoy that feedback and the, you know, being able to see it. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Um, and so, we, I think we started working together like it was last year. Um, and was there anything and was there any specific moment where you kind of where it clicked for you? You're like, wow, this is really powerful. Like there's something really powerful going on. Was there a moment in that process? Well, I mean, the first time I got my period and I didn't have the week of PMS leading up to it or the, the awful headache or the nausea. And, you know, it always seemed to hit on Fridays and Saturdays. So I do payroll at my office on Friday or I've lost a weekend day. So, I mean, there were some payroll days where I just had to push through and put my head on my desk and stay at work and get sick in the office bathroom. And oh, wow. so the first time I hit that, you know, had my period and didn't, didn't have that leading up to it, it was, it was very exciting. Wow. That's awesome. That's very cool. I, I love hearing that. Um, see, I told, I told people, <laughs> I told them, I'm so glad we're able <laughs> you know to what you're talking about. This. I do know what I'm talking <laughs> about. This is not my first time. On yeah, the yeah. That's very cool. Um, cool. So what, what would your, would, would there be any other things you'd want to tell people watching who, um, you know, maybe, I mean, there's a lot of people who are like perimenopausal who experience these kind of hormonal issues. Do you mm -hmm. think that there might be some help for them in this as well, who may have some varying I, degrees of hormones? I would hope so. Yeah. I mean, I would hope that I'm not the only person that gets this success from doing this program. So, you know, I, I encourage you to try it because, you know, what if you do feel better? What if it does work? Right, right. And I mean, as of, as of the many years we've been doing it, there's very little side effects at all. Like, it's really been an amazing... Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm asked that. I'm like, I'm like, I have to scratch my head. I'm like, what are the side effects here? I mean, there's very few, really. Um, yeah, I mean, I get, I get the gel on my pajamas. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> Is that gel? a bad side effect? <laughs> <laughs> a little clean. Other than that, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. awesome. That's very cool. Very cool. Well, hey, thank you so much, Shannon, for for hopping on here and sharing your story. Um, it's yeah, it's been really inspiring to see your your shifts and really to 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 see you get. A, a really important part of your life back that, you know, the, really those, those days of your lives that may have been spent in the hospital now are spent. Mm -hmm. What do you do on those days where you're just like, you're like, dang, I just got another <laughs> two or three days free of the, of the month. Yeah. I like, mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then I don't feel bad. You know, I hate feeling bad. My pain yeah. threshold is like low. So yeah. I, you know, I don't like feeling bad and I don't like having to take something you know, to make me not feel bad, but I will, I'll take whatever I put my hands on. Cause I don't mm -hmm. like feeling bad, mm -hmm. but I'm happy now that I'm not having to take something and I'm not feeling bad. That's fantastic. Super cool. Super cool. Well, hey, it really is. So for, it really is. Yeah. I'm, I'm stoked to hear this. So, um, thank you so much. It's so good to see you. And, um, I, I look forward to, yeah, maybe we'll do a check-in in a year and see, see a sure. follow up. So I would love to do that. Thank you so much. Sounds great. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm.